Welcome to Raychem's series of training videos from the Electrical Products Division. This tape will show a laboratory installation of a 15 kV heat shrinkable trifurcating transition splice for three conductor paper insulated lead covered or varnish cambric lead covered cables to three single conductor extruded dielectric power cable. Complete written instructions are included with each splice kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing your splice. To make the splice, you will need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. The recommended torches are Raychem's FH2629 self-igniting torch and the FH2616A1, which is a light portable propane torch. For your own safety, Please pay attention to the following precautions before beginning the installation. Failure to follow these warnings could cause oxygen depletion, fire, explosion, or electrical hazard resulting in serious injuries. First, make sure the area you are working in has good ventilation. Check all torch connections for leaks before lighting. This product is covered by a material safety data sheet. Before installing any electrical accessory, read and follow the safety requirements and the written instructions. In addition, be sure to follow the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. In this program, we will be splicing a 15 kV three conductor paper insulated lead covered cable to three 15 kV single conductor extruded dielectric copper tape shielded power cables. To begin the installation, verify your kit selection and prepare the cables as outlined in the written instructions supplied in the kit. Begin by preparing the paper cables first. To install the oil barrier system, begin by marking the paper insulation, starting from the cable end using the dimensions given in the installation instructions. Next, remove the printed backing strip from one side of the long strip of yellow stress relief mastic, otherwise known as SRM. Then roll the SRM up with the paper side facing out. This makes it easier to apply and prevents the material from sticking to itself. While removing the remaining backing strip, tightly wrap one half-lapped layer of SRM at the end of each phase, up to the insulation mark, stretching it to half of its original width. Be sure to wrap the SRM in the same direction as the insulation papers. Repeat this step for the remaining phases. Now, place the clear oil barrier tubes over each phase, but it to the lead sheath cutback. Using a reduced flame, shrink the oil barrier tubes in place, starting at the lead sheath cutback. Move the torch between the phase conductors, being careful not to nick the tubes with the end of the torch. Inspect the installed oil barrier tubes for a smooth, wrinkle-free surface. If needed, reheat to smooth any wrinkled areas. If you have belted cables, discard the mesh and continue with the next step. For screened power cables, install the one inch copper mesh supplied in each kit. Fold the mesh in half lengthwise and wind it around each phase shield as close as possible to the lead sheath cutback. Cut off the excess and carefully prepare the lead sheath using a clean blade to ensure better bonding during soldering. To complete, solder the copper mesh to the lead sheath. Now you are ready to install your black conductive tubes. Position each tube from the cable end according to the dimensions given in the installation instructions. Shrink in place starting at the end of the cable moving towards the lead sheath cutback. Be sure to move the torch evenly around each phase to ensure proper shrinkage. Using an approved solvent, clean the exposed oil barrier tubes between the conductive tubes and the lead sheath cutback. 
Next, assemble the SRM insert perpendicularly and position between the phases as close to the lead cutback as possible. Trim the insert to extend only one-eighth of an inch beyond each phase, being careful not to damage the oil barrier tubes. Abrade and clean the lead sheath and mark it at one and one-half inch from the lead sheath cutback. At this point, gently heat the SRM insert and adjacent oil barrier tubes for a proper oil seal. To install the oil seal, again stretch a long strip of stress relief mastic to one half of its original width. Tightly wrap the SRM so it covers the area from the mark on the lead sheath to the outer edge of the SRM insert. Four to six strips of SRM should be used to build the oil seal to an appropriate diameter. The finished SRM diameter should not exceed that of the breakout installed in the next step. Position the conductive breakout and shrink into place, starting at the fingers and working toward the body. Continue to apply heat until the breakout has a smooth, uniform surface. Now you are ready to prepare the poly cables. Abrade the insulation, if necessary, to remove any embedded semicon. Then, Clean the insulation and poly cable jackets for a minimum of 30 inches. First, position the sealing breakout with the fingers pointed away from the center of the splice. Then place one set of nested tubes over each cleaned poly cable. You'll need to measure your connector to determine what your insulation cutback is per the instructions. Then remove the insulation from each phase. Install a center blocked connector on each phase and deburr any sharp edges. Crimp your connector. Clean the insulation and connector areas of each phase using an approved solvent. 